Hello, it's Boghog here. I managed to kidnap Mark MSX from the Electric Underground and made him read my script at gunpoint. If you aren't aware of his channel and enjoy this type of content, you should check it out. He does similar types of shmup gameplay breakdowns, except more from the side of the player, and his videos are more laid back, so go check them out. Design principles. Your goals as a shmup level designer aren't all that different from what they would be in any other genre. You must give the player a path to follow, one with many varied challenges which will test different facets of the game's mechanic, one that's both clear and gives the player a good amount of wiggle room, one with varied pacing and good cycles of tension and release. The level should remain interesting on repeated runs as it's expected to be played a lot. What makes shmup level design seem tricky is the freedom the player has. Unlike other genres with gravity, floors, pits, and walls, shmups seemingly place no limits on the player's movement. In reality though, things are quite different. Limits. There are a lot of player behaviors you can notice and use. Players will tend to stay away from the top of the screen for several reasons. That's where most enemies will be. Even if they don't shoot many bullets, their collision hitboxes still make that area very dangerous. Basic, straightforward shots limit the player's offense if they're not directly below the enemies. Being close to enemies gives the player very little time to react to threats. Players will stay close to the bottom center of the screen, since this gives them good DPS, enough time to react to threats, and a lot of screen space to work with. Players will get close to bulky enemies to do extra damage whenever they get the opportunity. Then, they'll back away when the enemy starts to shoot. As long as popcorn enemies keep spawning in, players will be forced to move side to side to stream bullets and minimize danger. Players are inclined to avoid dodging bullets at weird angles, such as diagonal, because it requires more complex inputs and is generally harder to read. There are more patterns players will fall into. The best way to understand them is to play the games yourself and pay attention to what you're inclined to do. Defining Flow Flow is the sensation of smooth, sweeping, uninterrupted, and goal-driven movement. It's one of the most rewarding and enjoyable feelings you can get when playing a shmup level. To create a sense of flow, give the player goals by using high priority enemies. Use enemy spawn sequences to create a route for the player. Keep that movement going, don't let the player linger in one place. Complicate and vary up the movement to make it more engaging. Flow isn't the end-all be-all of level design though. View it as a reliable core you can build on and come back to. Breaking a level's flow can be desirable, not just to vary up the pacing of your level, but also because some challenges require it. The Topland Pattern This pattern is invaluable for creating flow within levels. It exists everywhere, but Topland is the clearest and most blatant example. To understand this pattern, break the top of the screen into a bunch of lanes. Around 5 or 7 tends to be the norm, but there are no hard rules. The basic idea is to keep the player mobile by either spawning enemies on opposite sides of the screen or keeping one lane's worth of distance between each spawn. Higher HP enemies tend to require larger gaps than weaker enemies. You can play around with different configurations as long as they follow this simple rule. Improving flow. Don't spawn two or more stronger enemies at the same time. Players won't know which to go for and will be momentarily paralyzed. Spawning them in a sequence suggests the intended route to the player. Try to avoid clustering enemies on one side of the screen or stacking turrets or tanks vertically. They break flow by forcing the player to linger in one area. Avoid spawning enemies too close to the edges. Try to give players enough wiggle room so they don't get trapped. Flow versus depth. Flow can require sacrificing depth, which isn't always a worthwhile trade-off. Spawning too many conflicting, overlapping elements will paralyze players and make them unsure what to focus on. While this breaks flow, this conflict and decision-making might be exactly what you want. Battle Garega and Armed Police Batrider are examples of games that have a more playground-like approach to level design. They are very interested in providing a huge amount of conflicting goals to the player, even if it doesn't make for the smoothest levels. Wave overlap. Shmup levels are timelines. 
Putting enemy spawns close together on the timeline creates overlap between them. Instead of approaching each enemy wave as a separate challenge, players will be forced to think of them as an interconnected whole. If they kill wave number one quickly, they will have more time to reposition and less lingering bullets to worry about. On the other hand, if they're slow and leave enemies alive, their position choices will be limited by the enemy shots and they will have a harder time dealing with wave number two. Low amounts of overlap give players breathing room to calm down and reset their positioning between each encounter. Heavy overlap puts a lot of pressure on players and forces them to move around very aggressively, not just to keep up with enemies but also to control the patterns. Heavily overlapping waves of high HP enemies makes for very tense, strict sections. Players will have to play by your rules with very little room for deviation. Overlapping waves of lower HP enemies give the players more routing freedom and shift focus on dodging while still preserving very high intensity. Tanks and popcorn. Sequences of elite enemy spawns do a good job of creating a main route through the levels, but they can get boring if not supported by smaller enemies like flying popcorn or ground tanks and turrets. Smaller enemies make everything more dynamic, so layering them around your main spawns will keep the players on their toes. Players will have to account for all sorts of small variations that come from additional popcorn enemies. Varied sections. Try to think of the theme of different sections of your levels to prevent them from blending together. Some sections might focus on popcorn rushes, some on ground turrets. Some sections can have a lot of destructible terrain mixed with the enemies. Some can focus on getting just-in-time bullet cancels, and some can be extremely tight gauntlets of difficult enemies. Repetition legitimizes. Smart, controlled repetition can make parts of your levels more memorable. Instead of a single encounter, players will remember a small gauntlet of encounters. It's easy to go overboard, but 2-5 repetitions are usually a safe bet, as long as you add slight twists to each one. Tension release. Shmups are very intense, elevated games, but they still have emotional dynamics, so to speak. Like a good piece of music, shmups quickly go through cycles of building tension and releasing it. They build tension by tightening up their difficulty. More enemies, more spawn overlap, more difficult patterns, more things to manage. When the tension reaches a climax, it's important to release it. This can take the form of big bullet cancels, huge walls of scoring items or pickups, lengthy explosions, short breaks, or looser sections. You should break up tight, intense sections with more freeform parts where players can improvise and experience a more mindless type of dodging and blasting. Difficulty and intensity are important, but you need to let the players enjoy their victories. Environments Memorization Memorizing dense, chaotic enemy spawns can be very difficult. Environments alleviate this by connecting the enemy spawns to memorable landmarks in the mind of the player, which can be used as mental shortcuts. Foreground-background interaction is key. If enemies spawn from ground hatches which are baked into the surrounding scenery, it will be easier to simplify and remember their spawn points. Destructible background objects also serve as anchor points that action happens around. This effect is even more useful in caravan shmups which have variable enemy spawn timing. It breaks up memorization into digestible chunks. Non-intrusive set pieces are also great for breaking up parts of your level, especially if enemies Enemies are tied to them in some way. Infinite Design Modern game levels are primarily designed for a single playthrough and thus prioritize first-time fairness, variety, clarity, good learning curve, non-exhaustive pacing, and memorable set pieces. If this style of level design is a horizontal line, then arcade level design is an array of lines stacked vertically. The levels are built for repeated play, so many design principles have to be applied with this in mind. Fairness. While shmups tend to try and telegraph threats when they first appear, long-term fairness via careful management of randomness is even more important. Clarity. Clarity. Arcade levels greatly benefit from gaining a lot of cool extra stuff behind player's skill. This is especially important for earlier levels, which will be replayed the most. This can be done via advanced scoring tricks, secrets like Doranpachi's bees, Huangge's hidden barrels, hidden tiles in caravan games, variable enemy spawns, and dynamic difficulty. 
learning curve. Players are not expected to learn and build strategies on the fly. Instead, the learning curve is spread across many runs. Consider this. Have players learned anything after a game over? And can they use that knowledge to create their strategy for the next run? Pacing. Be careful when playing around with dynamic pacing. What would be a small nuance or a welcome change of pace in a traditional level can become a major flaw in arcade games. Even something as minor as ship intro animations add up over the course of many runs. Set pieces. While interactive set pieces are good, non-interactive ones have to be treated very carefully. Over the course of a lot of runs, the spectacle wears off, but the non-interactive part remains. 